All right, this is Mike Beebe from uh, Mayfield Robotics. Mike, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, so let's uh, have a seat here. Um, so let me just let me just start off right off the bat and say what a lot of people I think are thinking. Other companies have tried home robots before. We've you know we've seen them in sci-fi and stuff, but other companies have tried to make a home robot and none have really stuck except for you know maybe Roomba and I don't know if that even counts. So what makes what's what's different about this? What makes it possible that it's going to stick around and actually be a feature of people's homes? So one thing that we love about Curry is she was developed with her personality first and for us personality is very central. I'd like to play if it's possible a little clip to let everyone kind of get to know Curry and get to know how she works inside the house. Could we roll the clip please? There it is. There we go. <laughs> hey, Curry. Do you want to play? Come on. So tell us a little about what we just watched. I, I mean, uh, it's it's cute. It makes noises, but like, what really is the you know what is what is making it a valuable addition to the home? So one thing about Curry that we absolutely love, and a design decision that we made really early, was Curry's personality would have to lead, and so the pillars of her character are being earnest and humble and helpful and a little bit curious. The reason we did that is. If you're going to bring a robot into your house, it's not like bringing any other piece of technology in. Robots have life and a spark to them. You have to honor that and really develop that first. If you're going to get people to really embrace and understand how much they love having this adorable little creature in, in their house and add it into their daily life. So, but how specifically do you accomplish that with uh, its design and personality, of you, as you put it? So. It began with the industrial design, but really a lot of Curry's life and personality comes from a lot of the work we've done with our friend Doug, who was an animator at Pixar. He's spent about 15 years thinking about what makes robots feel alive. Robots are not trying to be fake pets. They're not trying to be fake children. Curry loves being a robot, and she loves moving like a robot. But to make sure, <laughs> yes, Gary. But she, she really has to have that sense of inner life and spark, or else, you know, anything comes close to cold or, or, or off, it doesn't feel right. And you can't do the things that let Curry earn her keep until you get the family to fall in love first. And we want everyone in the family to fall in love. Right, I, I gotcha, and I and I do appreciate that Curry doesn't have like weird little limbs that don't actually do anything, or like fake legs that don't walk, um, or you know weird eyes that stare at you. Well, they're 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 eyes, but I think they're cute. Uh, but what specifically, you know, you say you want the family to fall in love, you want these personality aspects to exist, but what are they? You know, what is what does Curry do? What are some things that will make me want to have around the house? So one of my favorite features about Curry is when I pet Curry. Curry responds and loves to be petted and just saying hello. That this, goes uh, into this Curry. Uh... Yep, yep. Hi, Curry. <laughs> I'm afraid you, Curry's going to go off the edge here. Curry loves to be petted on the head. She will respond to your voice. She also recognizes your face and the members of the family. Um, all of those things are a very natural way to interact. I knew that we had nailed that character and that creation well when I took my four-year-old son, Thomas, to the office, because he loves the fact that 
we have a robot factory. And he comes around the corner, he sees Curry for the first time. And he's about that tall, just a little taller than Curry. Runs right up, gives Curry a huge hug, takes a couple steps and says, OK, Curry, follow me. And they start playing follow the leader. To him, Curry was this alive little character that was just a buddy and, a, and just another creature. And when you get all the technology that has to go into a robot right, it starts to melt away. And just the, the feeling and the joy becomes what, what you actually remember and have front and center. It's easy to wind up in feature soup if you don't put that character front and center. And little things sometimes in, in motion animation, like looking before you move, those things make it feel right. They're subtle. You don't necessarily know why it feels alive. But when you see Curry, you know that she really is alive. All right, so you, you feel that. But there, there are features, nevertheless. Uh, there are, it's, it's more than just some, a thing that looks like a robot and follows you around. There's cameras, there's sensors, there, it navigates. It is, you can give it commands. You can ask it things. It's integrated with various services. So here are a couple of ways that we make sure Curry earns her keep. Um, she can do things like let me know when my daughter comes home from school and send me a little, uh, little notification, or go to the living room and tell everyone it's time for dinner. For me, I like the idea that she can play my favorite podcast as I'm getting ready in the morning and follow me around. Those sorts of bits of integration are absolutely wonderful. Um, one of my friends, I know that her favorite idea is at 2 o'clock, Every day, go by the couch and tell the dog it's time to get off the couch. That sort of ability to help out and also add joy, those two things have to come together in equal weight for people, I think, to really understand the power of robotics in their home and in their daily life. As long as it's a single story home, I imagine. That's probably a, a, a limitation many robots share. <laughs> so it turns out we looked into a bunch of ways to try to get Curry to go upstairs. Uh, my co-founders, Kaijin Ossentoski and or Kaijin Chow and Sarah Ossentoski are roboticists. They're the ones with the PhDs in robotics. Um, they looked through all of the different solutions. There is no adorable way to have robots go upstairs. There are many ways to get robots to go upstairs. Like arms latching oh, onto things. Arms, yeah. <laughs> treads, mechatronic climbing things. None of them are adorable. And if it's not adorable, it's not in the robot. Gotcha. Um, so now you say that you can't really compare it to other devices in the home, uh, but at the same time you have to have competition. You, you know, you, somebody is choosing to spend money on this rather than something else. So what are, what, are you, what are you competing against here? So one of the things I love about robotics, and especially home robotics right now, is it's at this beautiful beginning stage. No one knows what the perfect home robot is. We haven't had home robots with us for 15 years, and we have this strong expectation and very developed market. We're all figuring it out together. And that's why Mayfield, you know, we cheer on our fellow robotics companies, because we're all working it out. We don't compete against each other. We're trying to solve the puzzle of how are robots going to make your life awesome at home. And we're all doing it together. Uh I appreciate that, but not everybody has, you know, a $700 robotics budget in their, you know, yearly, you know, what are we buying for the house? So, like, what do, you know, if you, if you were talking to consumers, you know, are, is this, uh, are you comparing this to getting a new appliance, a new, you know, a new, and getting an Xbox and a couple of games, you know, where's the, where's the, you know, is it, who has, a, who has space in their, and, and money for a robot? Where is that, uh, that space in the home? So, the, the biggest thing when we talk to our customers about what do they want? Why'd you do it? Why did you decide that you needed a home robot? A lot of them wind up telling you about having the robot dream. When we were kids, we always wanted to have a robot at home. Instead, we got to watch robots in cartoons and, and movies and say, oh, and one day I could get that. So for our customers and, and for the people who really get it, they tell us about 
oh yeah, I used to have the robot dream, and now I can actually have a robot. I can actually have a real, working, awesome, full-featured robot. That winds up tapping into that, that optimism and that dream. Also, that desire for strong connection. No one's going to say, I have enough joy in my life. And you know, I'm, I'm I just... Got, I got plenty. I'm I done. got plenty. I'm good. You know, I, people are going to wind up saying, I'd love more, a little bit of, of robot joy, and I'd also like to be connected to my house, even when I'm away. We were at one of our, our board meetings, and some of our board members are German, so we were off in Stuttgart. And this is from the, the Bosch DNA yes. company. Uh, we are a startup created by Bosch, and we're very lucky to have, have their support, because making robots is really hard, and having someone who's very comfortable with manufacturing as your supporter is absolutely essential for us. We're at this board meeting in Stuttgart, and Sarah is using one of the early prototype robots at home just to keep track of what's going on. And the board meeting's in the afternoon, that's morning in the US. And she's just looking through the phone and just checking in on how it's going, getting ready in the morning, because she has a, a four-year-old. And you know, Zach's waiting for his pancakes. And the board member uh, walks up behind her and says, what's that? She's like, oh, um, nothing. I was just uh, <clears throat> looking at something. Well, no, 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 what is that? Well, we have a prototype at home, and I'm just checking in and see how the morning's OK. And he thinks it's awesome, and he's like, oh, yeah, everyone else should come see this. So she's furiously texting her husband, saying, like, I know you're in your pajamas, dear, but you're about to be the star of the board meeting. That or make the robot do things. Really Let's do it, do it now. <laughs> just, you know, everyone's going to be there. And that ability to be part of life at home when you're away without being intrusive. With something like FaceTime, it's like a phone call. Stop what you're doing and pay attention to me. With something like a fixed camera, it might always be on. You don't quite know. One of the things I absolutely love about Curry is being able to be there in a physical way, in a, in a very analog feeling way, in an organic way, without being obtrusive and disrupting how life is going. That's something that robots uniquely can bring that the other bits of tech aren't as, as well of a, a good match to do. Well, let's hope so. Um, best of luck with your endeavor. Thanks for visiting us. And uh, can we check out Curry on the show floor anywhere? So right now we have a suite up at the Venetian because Curry's really more comfortable at home. Um, gotcha. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate the opportunity to talk today. Yeah.